Hey guys, Auspicious Shozzy here and welcome to episode 18 of the Into Miami series. Now today's episode, as you can tell by the title, we are going to be playing our first MLS game at the newly built Miami Freedom Park. It has been finished, as you can see, 2022 for the year built, 25,000 capacity. And uh, yeah, we are the only team that will be playing in it, so that's pretty cool. Um, or actually, my, apparently Miami City will also be playing in it, which is interesting, but they're only an, am yeah, an amateur side in the, like, sort of lower leagues. Might even be... Yeah, I'm not too sure. That's that's interesting, but... Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, let me just go into the, the club info here, and I'll show you guys a bit of a bit of a better look at it. As you can see... It's exactly what you would sort of expect. Um, if you wanted to see some of our other things here, we've got great training facilities, great youth facilities, adequate academy coaching, and ad adequate recruitment, even though uh, we don't actually get any players through. So, yeah, it doesn't really matter too much. But, yeah, for some somehow our academy team is still signing players um, on loan and permanent transfers as well sometimes. So, yeah. Anyway, we have a lot of transfers and trades to go over. Now, we'll start things off here on the transfer history page. We did let two players go, first of which was Aguila. He left for Sporting Kansas City. Um, he's currently down in their second, uh, their second tier team, Swope Park Rangers. So, yeah, he left. I think he left in the waiver draft if I'm not mistaken. And the other player might be pretty surprising, but Olusunde has left the club 10 million pounds to Burnley in the Premier League. And uh, it, was hard to, it was hard to let him go. It was really hard. As you can see, they're offering him massive wages, 19K per week, which we, we could match, but we'd have to put him on a designated player contract. Um, he was actually on one, but he was on a young designated player contract, which is slightly different. Um, yeah, I decided not to do it. Uh, we've actually replaced him pretty well anyway, so I'm not exactly too worried about it. Now, in terms of the players we brought in, of course, uh, two of these players were from the Super Draft, the first of which was Escamila, central midfielder, and of course, Froshawa who we had a bit of an issue with in the last episode. Um, he wouldn't sign despite us picking him in the draft. Uh, but then we signed him anyway straight after because we held his MLS rights. Pretty weird. Obviously, he's come in anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Now, the other players we brought in, we brought in Sam Vines. But as you can see, he's currently not at the club. You might be wondering why. We've traded him away. Um, and apparently they don't even want him either. Which is interesting. Uh, but yeah, we, we drafted him, I think, in the waiver draft. From Colorado, uh, as you can see. Like I said, we did trade him out. Uh, but we'll get into that in a second. And the other player, well, the other two players we got in. The first of which was Ogbita. Who is a relatively good centre-back on loan from Newcastle. Uh... You know, he he does a, a good job. We wanted I, I wanted some more centre backs. He's got really good sort of mentals there, and he's you know, he's got good enough good enough technicals there as well. Only twenty years old. And uh the other player we brought in, a bit of an American legend, Mix Discarud, for seven hundred thousand from Manchester City. As you can see, thirty one year old American. Probably a little bit past it, but we obviously need him for our tactics, so it does kind of work out pretty well. Now, if we go into all trades, as you can see, we have actually... We've done a little bit of activity. Now, the first player we brought in was the replacement for Olusunde, and that is Josh Emmanuel. We traded him in from Seattle Sounders. And, you know, I would say he's... As good, or almost as good, as Olusunde. As you can see, they're actually very similar. He's probably, I would say his pace and acceleration is a little bit lower. 
But apart from that, they're more or less identical. Uh, similar ages as well. He's only 24. 5.5k per week. A little bit of potential left in him as well, which is not too bad. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we did have to sort of go all out with our trade. Uh, we gave away the 2023 Super Draft first round pick, uh, a 2025 fourth round pick, two international slots for two years. So that was pretty expensive. Uh, and also 500k general allocation money as well. Now, the next player we brought in was Samuel, or Samuel Piette. Not exactly too sure. Obviously, he could be Fr uh, French Canadian. So, yeah, he's a Canadian international, 75 caps for the Canada national team. Uh, as you can see, another really good sort of center mid slash defensive mid. Uh, I'm using a new, ta new tactic. So, we, we do use defensive midfielders uh, that are actually defensive midfielder defends. That is the position and role so he's natural in that works out really well uh he's also got really good leadership determination and teamwork i think i think i might have made him the captain or the vice captain for this season replacing bezler um, but i really like him he's only 27 as well so he also had a bit of you know he's got a bit of legs left in him let's say that he's entering the sort of peak of his career um he was also extremely expensive giving away a 2024 third round pick, a 2025 third round pick, and 1.5 mil general allocation money as well. Uh, the next two are both of our players leaving. So first of all, we have Sam Vines. Uh, he left for a, an international slot for one year. So essentially replacing one of these for one year, which I thought was, it was, you know, pretty important to do that just to make sure we do have enough international slots for all of our international players. Um, and they also gave us a second round pick, uh, which I think is perfectly fine. We've already got two left backs in the in the first team. He was going to be a third choice. Doesn't really make sense. And uh, yeah, the final player was Justin Salazar. Unfortunately, losing the 19-year-old, I, I didn't want to hold him back. I feel like he's got a little bit of potential. He might be able to, you know, develop at Real Salt Lake, and uh, they gave us Toronto's 2025 first round pick in the Super Draft, so that was pretty good. Again, we got him on a free transfer, more more or less. I mean, we, we did transfer the rights from LA Galaxy to sign him in the first place. Yeah, there we go. That is all the transfer activity brought up to date. Now, if we have a look at the fixtures, we are actually in the CONCACAF Champions League, and one of today's games will be this quarterfinal first leg against Orlando City. Now, the first game we're going to be doing today is the MLS game at home, Miami Freedom Park against Sporting Kansas City. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to both of these games here today. I think they're, they're really going to be good. I think in the next episode, we're going to do two away games. We're going to do Orlando City in the second leg of the quarterfinal. And then we're also going to do Colorado Rapids. But yeah, that's that's for next episode. Anyway, the friendlies. We lost our first friendly to Nashville, 2-1. A little bit unfortunate. Um, however, we bounced back in the next one against Atletico Nacional with a 4-0 victory. Uh, this is sort of when the tactic... Well, actually, I started using the tactic at the start. So in that first game, it, it didn't really do too well. But it did do pretty well in that second game. And since then, it's... Been pretty amazing. So yeah, we, we then versus DC United, beat them 3-0. Versus Miami FC, beat them 3-0 as well. Uh, we then took on the New York Red Bulls and beat them 2-1 uh, before we had our first round for the CONCACOF Champions League. Uh, we drew this team, Real Esteli. I think I mentioned them in the previous episode, the Super Draft episode. Beat them 9-1 away from home in the first leg. Uh, we then had another friendly match against LA Galaxy, which finished a 2 all draw. And then we played the second leg, and we beat them 9-0 at home. 18-1 on aggregate. Incredible stuff. Um, but to be fair, they're a, they're a pretty bad team. Um, if I look at the goal scorers here, we've got Rua Diaz with two. Mueller getting a hat-trick in that first game. Garza getting himself a goal. Romano getting himself a goal. And Will Keane getting himself a brace. In the home tie, the second leg, Ben Chen getting himself a hat-trick, popping back up, 
Of course, he was on loan last season, uh, but he is back at the club now. And I think we're going to keep him around just in case. Uh, but we also had Sigala getting himself a brace there as well. Fernandez on the score sheet. Zellerlin with two goals as well. And finally, Romano on the score sheet then again as well. Uh, and that was actually the first ever game at, well, first ever, you know, professional game at Miami Freedom Park. 23,500 in attendance. I think that's pretty good. Anyway, let's get into the lineup for today's game. First game, anyway. Uh, we are doing a double header. This is the formation. Um, it is TFF's Gladiator. Um, if you're familiar with TFF, he does incredible tactics. Um, and I, I would really recommend you go and check him out. I think you can find him on FM Base and FM Scout. So go and check it out if you wish to do so. But yeah, we're going to go with Stranding Goals, Emmanuel at right back, Zimmerman and Ogbeta as our two center halves. Dars is going to start at left back. Defensive midfielder is going to be Piete. Uh, Diskarud is going to be the center mid today, box to box midfielder. Mueller is going to be on the right wing. Mischic going to be on the left wing. And then we're going to stick with Keane and Rua Diaz up front. The bench day is going to be McDermott, Abubakar, Ripkin, Besla, Martial, Locklear, and Fernandez. Uh, we are actually missing a few players. As you can see, Romano and Cisneros, two of our wingers, both picking up pretty serious injuries. Cisneros, well, Romano is actually fit, so I don't really know why he's not back in. I mean, he's been put on the disabled list, but I didn't actually do that, so pretty weird. Um, and Cisneros just starting to come back from injury, uh, but it says three to seven weeks, so still quite a while. Gaspar also suspended for this first game. All right, let's do it. I guess I'll tell the boys I expect to win. I don't really like doing that team talk anymore. I feel like it doesn't... I don't know, it doesn't really do anything special. All right, we've got the ball. Well, actually, they have the ball. Uh, but we have stolen it. Mischich with a good interception there. Literally running to the other side of the pitch. And, uh, yeah, I think that was an offside, yeah. Keen straying offside there. All right, here we go. Mueller cutting way inside, playing it out to Mischic. Can he cross it? He can, all the way to Mueller, who knocks it back down. Oh my god. What has happened there? It's going to be offside again. Will Keane again offside. But that was a, a cluster. I mean, it rebounded off Emmanuel and then hit Keane in the head, I think, and eventually went in the back of the net. Very strange. Keane again. Can't put it in the back of the net. One on one with the keeper. I mean, we've had 12 shots with only three on target, which is pretty bad in this first half. We are heavily, heavily dominating, though. There's a couple of bad performers out there, though. Gaza's on a 6.3. Mueller's on a 6.5. Discarud, 6.5 as well. I think, yeah, we're going to make a few subs here. I mean, luckily, Gaza's gone back up to a 6.8. Yeah, I think we'll go Marcial for Discarud. We don't really have a replacement right winger at the moment. Could bring Fernandez on. I think I'm going to bring Fernandez on as well. Or Will Keane. Hasn't, hasn't really been his day today. 
could take Rua Diaz off as well, but I mean, he's our designated player. And he does do a nice knockdown there. Bit of an odd cross by Gaza. Fiete out to Mueller. And uh, that's that's a really bad giveaway by him. And uh, Zimmerman brought his man down. And we are very lucky not to concede there. That, that was dangerous. That was a very dangerous attack by Sporting Kansas City. I have to say, we're actually not looking too too good out there. We're really just not looking like... I don't know, like we've been practicing our shooting. I mean, we are, we're attacking now, which is good. But we're just not being clinical. Emmanuel shoots, and that's a very, very tame shot. Alright, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push him forward. We'll, actually, we'll see what happens with this highlight. I don't exactly want to push him forward if we score. Mischich, oh, just hits the side netting. All right, now we push him forward. I mean, we've had 18 shots with only six on target. Not great. SKC are in behind. I mean, that's almost, that's an open header right there, which essentially hit the crossbar. Yeah, this is this is not a great start to the season unless we score a goal very late here. I have to say a draw is a bit of a failure considering we have actually played pretty well in preseason so far. And Bond gets that straight away, locks it out of the air. And we're into the final minute of the 90. We do still, well, we did still have the ball, but we've given it away. I'm not sure if this is our highlight or if it's their highlight. We do get the ball back, so I think it's ours. Fernandez in behind. Rua Diaz, please, he's onside. Thank God. We get the 90th minute goal from the man himself, Rua Diaz. The, design, the DP, the designated player, saving our backside. I mean, he, he did it quite a few times last season as well. What a finish, though. He's, he was already sliding across the ground when Fernandez put in the cross. That's a real striker there for you. And somehow we have won that game. It literally looked like we were about to draw. Man, 1-0 victory. In the first ever MLS game at Miami Freedom Park. Just shy of 20,000 attendance. It's not too bad. Not too bad. So yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to skip forward the four days and I'll join you back for the lineup. All right, so let's get into the lineup. We've actually made a few changes here. Uh, as you can see, in goals, we've brought McDermott in. For no real reason, other than the fact that I feel... Well, McDermott actually played the, the first round. He played both legs in that one. I think he did it. I'm not, actually, I'm not sure. He might have played one game, and then maybe Strand played the other. But he's going to come in. Uh, we're also going to bring in Romano, who is obviously able to play in this competition. Um... Obviously, the MLS disabled list is very weird and strange, even though it, it kind of makes sense. Anyway, enough about that. So he's coming in on the left wing, and then up front, the final change is Fernandez coming in for Will Keane. Um, basically, all those players have, well, essentially moved to the bench, being Keane, Mischich, and Strand. So yeah, let's get into it. We are the home team, so it's going to be pretty important to try and keep a clean sheet here today. I'm going to tell the players to go out and avenge what happened in the last game. If you remember correctly, 
from the end of last season. Uh, Orlando more or less cost us the supporter shield, and they've already scored a goal. Eight minutes in, they have the opening goal. Robin Jansen, or Jansen, has scored from a corner. Straight across the near post, and they already have an away goal. That is really bad, considering this is a, a two-legged tie. Yeah, not good. Obviously, their their first shot as well. If you can, if you can even call it a shot. All right. Oh, we've, I thought we we're about to give the ball away in a dangerous position there. Iskarud loses the ball, but luckily Gaza picks it up, and he goes for a shot himself. And unfortunately, it does go over the bar. We've had four shots with none on target so far. Gaza's on a 6.2 as well. Mate, I'm, I'm sort of thinking that I probably should have played Gaspar. I mean, it's going to be so important to, to get a goal back at the very least in this first half. Rua Diaz, Fernandez gets in there. We've got the equalizer on the stroke of halftime. Rua Diaz unfortunately missed his shot, but luckily the keeper just palmed it straight into the path of Gerard Fernandez. And luckily for us, as you can see here, not a great shot by Rua Diaz, but Fernandez following it in really well, getting himself his second goal of the season there. Both goals, of course, coming in the CONCACAF Champions League. I was going to say that I'm not happy because, I mean, we have kind of dominated them. We are the home team as well. I mean, Gaza's on a 6.1 at the moment. I think I'm going to bring him off. And I'm going to ease Piete off as well. I'm not 100% not sure how, if that's the... Or how to pronounce his name. Piete. I'm going to go with Piete. Because I'm just not sure. But I'm going to bring Martial on at left back for Gaza. He's by far our worst performer at the moment. So I think getting him off the pitch is probably going to help everybody else a little bit. And he's now picked up an injury. Lovely. Okay, well, options. Uh, I guess Ripkin for Eman uh, yeah, for Martial, and then Emmanuel can swap around. Perhaps this is not a, not a great first leg. It's really not. I'm going to push him forward though. I have to I have to push him forward, and we have to try and just try and get another goal. I mean, the one-all draw with them getting an away goal, is such a bad result. All right, Mueller with a free kick. Mueller! Oh, someone finish! Oh, man. What an opportunity. What a golden opportunity, man, and we've stuffed it up. Come on, boys. Romano. Oh, my... Oh, he's offside. No way. What a finish. What a finish. That is, that's harsh. That's, that's very harsh. And it looks like it's going to finish a one-all draw. Yeah, there we go. First leg finishes one-all. But Orlando do get that away goal. I'm not happy with that performance. I'm really not happy. I mean, we conceded in the eighth minute from a corner. In a sellout as well. 25,000. Yeah, it was literally completely sold out. 1,250 away fans. Of course, it is essentially the Florida Derby, you would call it. 
Martial picking up a four-week injury there as well. But that is going to wrap this episode up, guys. So like I said, in the next one, we're going to be doing the second leg of the quarterfinal against Orlando. And then we're also going to be doing the Colorado Rapids away game as well. Another big doubleheader. And hopefully we can beat Orlando and get into the semifinal of the CONCACAF Champions League. Anyways, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And apart from that, guys, take it easy and goodbye.